Three-dimensional scaling is the big theme. The audience today has 3D glasses. Now, we have Jack Domey on here at 12 o'clock, and we're going to be asking about that. It's unprecedented. Nobody's ever done that scale out, scale up, scale deep. Um, we'll find out which, are, which parts of that are real, which parts of that are marketing, and, do, and go deep today. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the sun is shining here in Silicon Valley on us. We're in a great spot here. But we are listening to a revolution with Hitachi because, as you know, Dave, we've been asking all of our guests going back to the SAP press conference, to the Oracle event, and VMworld, is it scale up or scaling out as a fundamental difference? And we've heard different answers. And I think what Hitachi is coming forth today with is an absolute message that you need to scale up and scale out and scale deep. Now, scaling out is something that's being worked on by the top computer scientists at Stanford, MIT, and all around the world. So that's not, uh, that code has not been cracked yet. And Facebook and others are dealing with that. But scaling deep is a data-centric model. And I am really, really blown away again by the difference between the two mindsets. We heard from Oracle, very proprietary application focused. They do not want to be open. Hitachi is absolutely being open. And again, we're seeing this, this mindset, the cultural difference between the industry heavyweights of open versus closed. That's right, a critical part of Hitachi's strategy is to virtualize the storage, not only the Hitachi storage, but any third-party storage as well. That's a, that's a unique capability of the industry. Only, only a few vendors do it. IBM does it with an appliance. LSI is doing it, HP does it with the LSI appliance, and there are a few others, but, but Hitachi is really the leader there in terms of virtualized storage and allowing third parties in in an open manner, as you said. Yeah, in a nutshell, the key highlights for me that I heard were, uh, it's a very customer partner focus, but that's, you know, all corporations say that. Uh, but their business model's been changing, as they pointed out over five, seven years ago. They've moved significantly from a revenue standpoint where software is driving, you know, over 50% of that revenue. And again, openness. And, and that is very key. And data, uh, the data strategy, the data strategy is very, very uh, independent of applications. Um, it's very cloud-based. He talked extensively, must have used the word governance, and counted. I counted over a dozen times and stopped counting at that point. So the notion of governing data uh, in an application silos is a big message. And then content cloud. He said content cloud, I counted. Uh, almost half a dozen times. Yeah, the, the content cloud really caught my attention. Hitachi used to essentially, 20 years ago, used to just copy IBM. IBM would come out with a product and IBM would come out with a little bit better product or, or Hitachi would come out with a product 18 months later. This is completely different. You know, EMC is the big competition these days and Hitachi's strategy is, and from a product standpoint and a marketing standpoint is completely different from EMC's. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. The, the platform is different, the approach is different and this whole notion of unifying content into the high-end mission critical systems is, is quite interesting and I want to learn more about that today with the guests that we have on. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of guests on here, but, but Jack Domey was very impressive. You know, he's not the flashy Steve Jobs, but he actually delivered great messaging and, and he's, he's a very cool guy. I, I will say that he was wrong on a few occasions. Um, being new to Facebook, as he pointed out, <laughs> Facebook has more than 400 million users. That's well over 500 million. 500 million. I'm not sure he's uh, got his hand on the pulse with relative to that, but uh, oh, he's new, and, yeah. and I tried to friend him, and he can't friend him. <laughs> and only he can friend you. So well, I mean, I think you know, I think I think he, you know, he doesn't have a real pulse of the of the latest and greatest statistics, but you know, I think he did bring up social networking as a proof point, and the proof point is that there's two aspects of data that he was talking about. One was the existing current situation, which is enterprises and big, large-scale institutions like financial houses, telcos, insurance companies, they have data. Data that's tied to application silos. So he talks in that framework as a governance issue. Who's going to govern the data? How does it stay persistent? So that's kind of the existing, current, installed situation, installed base, if you will. Um, then he mentioned growth. And the growth areas, as he pointed out, was what we've been talking about um, you know, from VMworld, our talks with Cloudera, and then recently at Oracle Open World with Greenplum, is unstructured data. I mean, he clearly said that this new cloud, this new environment, is going to be unstructured data, and that's where he tied in the Facebook uh, point, that social networks are throwing off this new type of data and the innovation and how to manage that data. So he, although he got the number wrong on Facebook, really had his hands on the pulse, in my opinion, on the core issues. He was only 100 million off, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think more importantly, you know, I mean, he knew the issue, he knows the issues. I mean, the issues are unstructured data, massive growth in data management. You know, is that gonna get easier? It's, no, it's gonna get harder. And so by focusing solutions on that, that was an interesting point. Right, and Hitachi's messaging focusing on that is, is new and different, right? You think about Hitachi, you think about the most mission critical, high end OLTP types of applications. And now Hitachi, a couple of years ago, bought a company called Archivist out of Waltham, Mass. That was a content play. 
and now you're starting to see product merge together and that's something that's actually quite unique in the industry that now NetApp obviously talks a lot about unified storage but at this level at this high-end mission critical level you typically don't see that you certainly don't see that from from EMC in terms of bringing together the content and yeah, the yeah. mission critical OLTP piece that's different that's new let's find out how real it is the other thing that I, I observed is uh, Hitachi's very proud of their culture I mean they started the whole presentation off with the drums beating I mean you know that the, you know they're obviously a multi uh, you know multinational company um, Ishigaki-san is now Japan. on. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, that, the heritage, they're proud of that. I mean, they're not known for their marketing hype, but clearly here they're putting a lot of effort into pushing out messaging that's really kind of game-changing. So I, I was actually encouraged to hear and see that kind of cultural, you know, they're not hiding from the culture. They're proud of it, and, and that was interesting. Yeah, 100 years is quite a milestone. L let's talk a little bit about the folks that we have on today. So we, we're kicking off the morning uh, with Roberto Basilio, who, and we're going to take a product focus. He's going to tell us what's new in the product, what's different, and and what their vision is, you know, and how, where it, where they've come from. And then we've got a number of analysts on uh, this morning. We've got John Webster from the Evaluator Group, Ray Lucchese is coming on our own, Wikibon's David Floyer, Mark Peters from ESG is going to be on, and then we've got a segment with the IDC analysts, Rick Villers and uh, Laura Dubois from from IDC, and then we've got some bloggers on, uh, Devang, Storage Nerve, many of you know Devang, and uh, Rick Vanover. Are, are coming on for a session and then we go in to the afternoon and Jack Domey is going to kick it off at noon really excited to 12 o'clock is a big interview Jack yeah. Domey is dynamic he's, he's the CEO having him on will be really really fun and we're going to ask him some tough questions we're going to put put his uh, feet to the fire and uh, have him come into the cube inside the cube and I really want to hear from him more about some of the strategy and tactics that they're executing in this marketplace obviously Hitachi is changing their their focus obviously from a marketing standpoint but the product differentiation seems to be a unique thing and they've they've got that product leadership from what we're hearing but I want to see the meat in the bone yeah. I want to hear from him what is his cloud vision Right, we've had a number of big execs on recently. We had, you know, Joe Tucci was on, Mike Capellas. We had Dave Hitz last week. We had Tom George on. Of course, I'm going to ask him the question yeah, that we right. ask every CEO: course, Is right. storage sexy <laughs> or hot? Let's see what he says. We had a great what answer last week from Dave Hitz. It was beautiful. What do you think he's going to say? You know, uh, um, I, I'm I'm curious of what he's going to say. We've heard a different answer from everybody. Joe Tucci <laughs> didn't buy into it, right? It kind of it's kind of like you know the question: What's the craziest thing you ever done? The answer <laughs> is actually very telling. <laughs> you know, by the personality. Right. So we'll, we'll see what he has to say. And then, and then later on today, we've got some customers. Um, the the GM of Intel's IT is going to join us. Uh, the head of uh, trading uh, and infrastructure at Lloyd's Banking. Uh, and then the University of Utah will be on. And then and at the end of the day, Brian Householder, who we heard from this morning. And really, Brian sort of is the, the overseer of all of the marketing and the strategy, and, and that's really his role. Brian has been very active in, in the strategy of the company. Um, so he's going to be a great uh, guest. And then we're going to try to get some other, other guests on as well. Uh, we're here at SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, continuous coverage of Silicon Valley. We're here at the Hitachi Data Systems, massive launch of their new product, the virtualized storage uh, platform. Um, they support us to come here, SiliconAngle and Wikibon, our independent media and research organization. We're excited to be that they requested us to come down and uh, helped out a little bit with some of the, the cost to, to do the cube. So we're really thankful for Hitachi for inviting us. But we want to get to the heart of the issues here. We want to dig in, Dave, and I want to ask you about Hitachi, and I want you to, to tell me about, you know, uh, how that's how they've changed over the past five years. Jack Domey mentioned it, but I also want to ask you ab about that in context to Oracle. I mean, I'm just seeing two different animals here, Oracle and uh, Hitachi. Well, Oracle just is coming across as an evil, land-grabbing, telco-like environment. Hitachi, first of all, is a is a 97, 98 billion dollar company. I mean, it's just an enormous uh, firm. They they build trains and medical equipment and all you know semiconductors and disk drives and obviously uh, HDS uh, does the the storage subsystem piece as well as some other things. What's been striking to me, and I've been following Hitachi before they were Hitachi Data Systems, and and as I said, they used to just copy whatever IBM did, and they've really strived to do innovation. I've been to Odawara a number of times in Japan which is their innovation center where they design all these subsystems and they tr really try to leverage the other parts of the organization, the networking piece, the semiconductor piece, the disk drive piece, which they purchased from IBM several years ago. Uh, but I think you're absolutely right with regard to, to Oracle. What impresses me about Hitachi is how they're not just copying uh, IBM anymore, not just trying to copy EMC. They're really trying to break new ground and they've proven that. 
for the last five to seven years. Where's their leadership on the high end, low end, mid range, all of the above? Where would you say that you know from there putting their stake in the ground? There's going to be the competition. Their legacy is unquestionably the high end, and of course, management several years ago saw that the high end was a you know a, a managed decline business, and so they struck out. They've really developed a much much stronger uh, mid range product called the AMS, and they do a, a they have a partnership with Blue Arc, really hot. Uh, California company who's been growing like crazy and, and they've worked together to really build up using that again that content archivist platform to build a great vision you know we heard a lot of it today we're going to hear more of it relative to Oracle Oracle's a, a whole different ball game right yeah. Oracle's going to take its applications and and really build a big giant ironically hairball around the Oracle applications and the Oracle well let's just let stuff. me dig into so that so he uh, Jack told me the CEO of Hitachi Days this was on stage saying he wants to free up the data from the application and he must, must have said application silos a few times. Or what you're saying is Oracle is application centric. They don't want to do that. No, they want to. They want. They want the Oracle applications to be the center of the universe, and the Oracle slash Sun hardware to be managing that. Okay, so they're really not very, uh, not at all inclusive of, of other. In fact, Sun used to resell Hitachi's high end platform. One of the things that Larry Ellison has said publicly when he took over the the the, the management of Oracle said, "We didn't make enough money off of the Hitachi platform. Great." product one of the best products out there but we didn't make enough profit so we cut it we're going to sell our own stuff really very profit driven sun is now chasing profits not revenue and innovation where's the innovation in with the oracle versus hitachi i mean you know which open closed architecture which one of those in your opinion is most innovative well i mean oracle owns the database right so it doesn't have to innovate the same way that uh, an hitachi you know, or a NetApp or, or other companies ha uh, have to innovate mm -hmm. or they'll, they'll die. Tom Peck was on the show. We talked about Stack Wars, but one of the questions we asked him at SAP Sapphire was, you know, breaking down the silos here. Uh, Jack Domey was talking specifically about application silos relative to data. Although Tom Peck didn't talk about that, and obviously the CEO of Levi Strauss, I've uh, been on the Cube a, a few times, an alumni there. What is it? What is your view on on the application silos and then uh, Hitachi's position, which is saying, "Hey, we want to break that down and bring the data into this um, virtualized storage environment, or cl content cloud, or information cloud." Well, some of the themes that we've heard, and Hugh Yoshida now, the CTO of Hitachi, is on the stage. But one of the themes we've heard from VMworld on really here is that seventy percent of the investment that IT organi organizations make is in keeping the lights on. I call it run the business. And only 30% is spent on grow the business and transform the business. And the big reason why is that IT infrastructure can't support that, that grow the business and transform the business because it's all developed in silos. The applications, the middleware, and the infrastructure are all silo-based. And it's very, very difficult to be agile with that type of environment. Virtualization is changing all that. I, one of the things that we uh, we talk about at the market level and, since, and the end user impact of all the storage is, you know, you know storage is, is, we always say sexy, but it really does impact the end users. Uh, I wrote a post uh, earlier in the year called Mobile Innovation Cycle. So if you go to Google and type in, you know, Mobile Innovation Cycle, um, you'll see a post that I wrote. It was really groundbreaking at the time, but now everyone's using it, is, which is data is the, is the enablement of the innovation and relative to the growth of mobility. But one of the things Jack Domey said on there, and, he, and he, he, we could have unpacked that for a good half hour, was he said, there are new forces, new environments, and cost pressures with managing the data growth. And he said, the new ways to manage data growth are in three areas, servers, applications, and consumers. He's essentially talking about the areas of virtualization that have a data-centric component. Obviously, server virtualization, we all know that market. Application uh, virtualization, that's where the storage is separated from the applications and the consumers. So the consumers having iPhones and iPads and mobile devices, they're going to get virtualization, which we heard at VMware loud and clear that there's an end user component of this. So you know, he actually laid down a foundation I was impressed with that is very, very relevant, that three-legged stool, servers, applications, and consumers. And, and you know, I, I liked Dave Hitz's answer on his storage sexy, right? He said... You know, if if we're the plumbing, right? If if we were a Hollywood movie, we wouldn't be the 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 leading actor, right? We wouldn't be the star. We'd be the supporting cast, and that's really what what storage is all about. And so, no, well, that's not what we're hearing from Hitachi. Hitachi's here saying today that they want to be the lead actor. Well, but they're yeah. saying we want to be the change agent with 3D scaling. Yeah. So, so the interesting thing ne to does me NetApp is, have an answer to that? Well, you, first of all, you heard you heard Brian Householder say every customer wants to do more with less. Okay, and so the Hitachi as a, as a as a storage supplier has to provide. You know that. I mean, 
Whether or not a company in the storage business can actually be that leading actor, I think remains to be seen. You know, we're hearing some interesting things about the content cloud and bringing together uh, uh, virtualized infrastructure and the content cloud. Uh, will that make it a leading role? I, again, I kind of like Dave Hitz's answer. It's the applications. You called it the cold, clean water running through the pipes, right? He used the plumbing. Versus dirty analogy. water. <laughs> right. Versus dirty the water. dirty, dark water. <laughs> right. Lukewarm, dirty water. Right, so. Bad data um, is bad water. So, you know, but what, uh, to <laughs> me, what makes storage sexy is, is it's a, it's a gr growing and profitable business, you know? And it's, and it's interesting. There's a lot, of, a lot of characters in this business. That's what makes storage interesting and so, hot. So do you think, you know, let's talk reality now. Let's bring this down to some proof points. Do you think Hitachi has some legs to stand on with this big announcement. I mean, obviously, they're talking a great game. Let's drill down. And when we get the guests inside the cube, I want to ask them some specific questions. What, 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 what questions do you have in your mind to kind of flesh out and bring out the reality of this message? Well, so I, I, first of all, I want to understand what's new, right? For, so to your point, Hitachi has a lot of proof points. Hitachi's been doing this for, you know, decades. And they just, Hitachi's one of those companies, they make slow, steady, consistent progress. Now, that whole thing about 3D scaling, scale up, scale out, and scale deep. Now I get the scale up, I mean Hitachi's always scaled up, and I get the scale deep because they're allowing third party devices to attach and they can go deep, cheap and deep with those 30, uh, third party devices. It's the scale out as you said, there's a lot of computer science around that, and I see bits and pieces around the clustering technology that Hitachi has that I think give us clues, but I really want to know what kind of legs that piece has because that's unprecedented you mean the scale out business. Piece. The scale out piece, that's well, there's right. There's all kinds of issues with scaling out as I see this round trip times on the network and you've got data coherency, all kinds of like data issues around updating us because you can spread the data everywhere that's great but you know there's real innovation and real math that goes involved with with that kind of architecture you're talking uh, about the coherency well just the scaling out performance. well the scaling out is putting data anywhere is, is interesting it's a really i think important part of the future and we've had a lot of conversations that we've had you know fusion io on dave flynn he talked a lot about these web 2.0 companies like twitter and facebook and myspace scaling out and they need to scale out because they, they, they're moving so fast. They need building blocks that allow them to grow and not have well, let's IT talk about infrastructure. Third, let's talk about one of the key features that we liked. I'm, one of the things that I liked, I heard, was this openness message, and you just mentioned it, that any third party can attach. Can you elaborate more on what that means? Um, we saw a Falcon store in there who's been on the queue. You mentioned Fusion IO. They got a hint of all the partners in there. Intel's in there. I mean, what, what does this all that mean? What does that mean a third party can attach to Hitachi so, and so they get the benefits? Yeah, of so that? Hitachi early on decided it's got to, remember I said, Hitachi decided it had to differentiate from the likes of EMC. And so what it did is it came up with this notion of a virtualized platform, very powerful platform. And they had this innovation where they said, let's allow third party disk subsystems to attach to our engine. And a lot of people think, well, that's strange. Why would you allow third parties to attach? Well, Hitachi recognized that there's a lot of data out there that has to be moved, that has to be managed, that's stranded. And so what they did is provide a platform. It was actually quite brilliant because the primary use case for that was to suck data into the Hitachi platform and, and, and migrate it. Um, but nonetheless, a lot of companies will attach third-party drives and, and use them as a cheap and deep storage. So it extends the life of your existing assets. And what Hitachi does with its software is it embraces those other third-party assets. So it brings life, if you will. It breathes life into these old, stale third-party devices, whether they're whether they're from EMC or 3PAR or IBM or HP or whomever, they support these devices. And it's, it was a very interesting strategy. You've seen IBM have some success with that, with, uh, with, a, with its SVC product, uh, LSI with a, with a product called SVSP. Or actually, they OEM that to, uh, to HP. LSI calls it the SVP, yeah. I believe. So a number of, of companies have, have hopped on this. Now, EMC with VPlex has jumped into the game. So you're seeing so talk about talk about EMC. Obviously, we we know EMC. You know they, they support us with the cube and everything. But you know you're talking about EMC is own the high end. Okay, Hitachi has market share numbers that show them as number one in virtualization. You wrote a post, and I wrote a post uh, <coughs> amplifying the fact that EMC is number one in virtualization. So so who's number yeah, one? Yeah, let's I mean, clarify I mean, that. So so EMC is number one in VMware, and presumably uh, according to this, so ESG came out with some data that that suggested that that in terms of share penetration within VMware and other virtualized accounts, EMC was by far the dominant account. And that's not a shock, right? You would expect that, right? They, they work hard in VMware, they own VMware. You know, it's a big, big area of emphasis for them. They get a lot so of- So they're number one in VMware so they're clearly number one, in, in, in my opinion, and the data shows it in, in the US anyway, it was US data, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's overseas as well, in 
VMware environments, hands down. Now, that's different than Hitachi. Hitachi is number one or you know, maybe number two, but right up there in, in virtualization of storage, the virtualization of the storage back end. Uh, until VPlex, e EMC really didn't have a solution for, for virtualized storage. And I would say Hitachi's number one there in terms of maybe licenses sold, I don't know about revenue. We'll have IDC on. Maybe they can give us some perspective on that today, but very clearly Hitachi they're, is well, the they're, they're, Hitachi's claiming number one on that, so. No, I would believe it. I, I, I think it's well, certainly number one from a, from a function and a product standpoint. Um, whether or not it's revenue, it's hard to tell because they ship licenses with this stuff, and, and, and it, it wouldn't surprise me if they're number one. It's, I, it's Hitachi and IBM with SVC right up there, and, and SVC is really an appliance that doesn't have storage in it, so I would, I would tip the hat to Hitachi because of the revenue associated with the internals of that device. Yeah, the other thing that we heard from him was um, anyone's storage um, and the idea of having efficiency and mobility of data. Um, and then he talked about the key things of, of this, which was optimizing the infrastructure and optimizing discovery. Those two variables were key on Jack Domey's list of the areas of innovation around virtualization of storage, which he did say virtualization of servers have been amazing, but virtualization of servers is dependent upon storage. So, you know, you and I have been talking about the linchpin of cloud is storage, and it happens to be true. He talked about that, but, but importantly, if you optimize the infrastructure and then the ability to discover the data, you can integrate that into data and applications. So that, to me, is a big focus. I mean, we talk about the Apple iTunes, and I, I, you know, the App Store. The world's seeing all these apps. Tsunami of applications. So applications are hitting us left and right on the marketplace. All the data from those apps cannot live in a silo. Yeah, and I think it's smart. It's uh, clear to me. I think it's smart for, for Domain to message around Facebook, for example, because you know you think of applications in the enterprise, and obviously you think Oracle and SAP, and you think these you know big conglomerates, but there's so many emerging applications that are driving innovation. We've talked about the consumerization of IT. It's, it's true for the applications as well, don't you think? Yeah, I think anyone who could take the applications and give them freedom around the, how the data is managed and accessed will be a winner because application providers now have distribution characteristics of big application developers all the way down to what they call the long tail of applications, the small guy. Someone who bangs out an, an, an iPad app or an iPhone app or Android app and gets, you know, 100,000, maybe even a million downloads. I mean, that's, and you can have a three-person company do that. Right. And make money, have a great life. Right. Buy a boat, buy a house. Use the cloud. But do they want to build a back-end <laughs> data center mm -hmm. yeah, to no manage right. that data? No, no they'd love to have right. a Hitachi cloud solution for content cloud. So I think this content cloud has legs. I want to ask them specifically what software is being innovated to make that happen.